Venus has been the sister planet of Earth and a location of great wonder for many centuries. As our technology improves, is it worth going to Venus as well? In terms of practicality, there are several reasons why one would think that Venus is a more desirable target than Mars for colonization. Venus has 90% the gravity of the Earth, which would very likely be enough to prevent any gravity-related health problems that may be encountered on Mars. On top of this, Venus has an orbital period of 224 days, and a spaceship to Venus has a launch window every 584 days, compared to the 780 days for Mars. Venus's day-night cycle lasts for an extreme 243 days. On top of this, Venus is one of the very few planets to have a thick atmosphere. So why isn't Venus our top priority for space exploration? Back in the 19th century, right up to the 1960s, most people assumed Venus was a lush, swampy planet, indeed ripe for exploration. The thick cloud cover could protect against solar radiation, and a similar gravity would make any explorers feel right at home. These perceptions changed, however, in 1958, when C. Mayer published a paper detailing observations of Venus, concluding that the planet had an extremely hot temperature. Mariner 2, launched in 1962, confirmed this hypothesis, and the temperature of Venus is now believed to be around 460 degrees Celsius, making it the hottest planet in the solar system. Its thick clouds are actually made up of sulfuric acid and carbon dioxide, making it poisonous to any would-be colonists. Even if Venus's heat problem could be managed by explorers, any person on the surface of Venus would still be crushed by a pressure 93 times that of the Earth's, making this equivalent to being one kilometer underwater. So far, Venus has been visited exclusively by robotic probes. The first attempt to send a probe to Venus was in 1961, with the USSR probe, Venera 1. However, due to a communications failure, there were no signals returned when it flew past Venus. The first successful Venusian probe was the previously mentioned American Mariner 2 probe, which confirmed the temperature of the planet and the composition of the atmosphere. Following the success of several orbiters, landing on Venus with a probe was the next step. The USSR probe, Venera 7, was the first successful lander on the Venusian surface, lasting for an hour under the crushing weight of Venus. Since the first probes, several more landers and orbiters have delivered more pictures of the surface and of the planet itself. Only a few future scientific probes are planned to explore Venus, but is there any hope of humans settling Earth's sister planet with such a challenging environment? There are several ways humans could explore Venus. The most popular option is not to land humans on the surface of the planet, but instead to create floating bases stationed in the clouds. The reason for this is because while the ground temperature is just short of 500 degrees, the temperature 50 kilometers above the ground is 75 degrees and up this high, the pressure is just one atmosphere. Compared to Mars, the cost of getting a manned mission to Venus is cheaper and the travel time to the planet is shorter. Also, Venus, unlike Mars, has protection from radiation and the gravity, even 50 kilometers up, would be enough to prevent any serious medical problems. A proposed mission by NASA called High Altitude Venus Operational Concept, or HAVOC for short, would first involve a robotic trip with an airship, followed by a 30-day manned mission orbiting Venus, then a 30-day manned mission on an airship around Venus, and finally, a permanent base in the sky. The prospect of floating cities on Venus is exciting, and opens up many practical uses, one of which is terraforming Venus. To terraform Venus, unlike Mars, would be much more challenging. The floating colonies would begin to cover the atmosphere of Venus, creating a sort of solar shield. This method would gradually cool down the planet, but this alone is not enough. Solar shades could also be used to cool the planet and allow liquefaction and the eventual freezing of the carbon dioxide. By this point, this method could bring the temperature down to just negative 56 degrees Celsius and the pressure to just five times that of the Earth. Finally, the rotation of the planet could be sped up by the gravitational effects of asteroids. A manned mission to the surface of Venus may be more than a century away, but there is nothing stopping us from planning a mission to explore the clouds of Venus. 
Mars and Venus will remain our targets for the first half of this century, but what is beyond them? Does Jupiter hold any potential future for a human outpost?